Good afternoon, everybody. It is about 4.30 on Jan 4 30 p.m., obviously, on January 13th. It's currently sitting at minus 32 degrees Celsius, which is actually warmed up to minus 32 degrees Celsius. You probably can't hear me because this heater in my truck is going full blast here. Let me try to turn it down. There, that's helping a little bit here. There we go. Okay, so this morning it got down to uh, minus 41 degrees Celsius and minus 40 Celsius and minus 40 Fahrenheit is the same temperature. So it is stinking cold with a wind chill of minus 59 degrees Celsius. So it's cold. We are in the deep freeze as just about everybody in Canada is and even deep down into the US I believe you guys are also in the deep freeze. So I guess we can't complain too much because we've had an amazing, beautiful fall. Like it was like plus eight degrees over Christmas. Um, we had some plus 10 degrees right around like Christmas, New Year's. And then all of a sudden just like bam, winter came. So uh, we are all struggling to adjust. And obviously we're all working on air drills under here. And we are not currently doing it when it's minus 30. <laughs> Oh man, but uh, we were also cleaning seed at the South Farm. As you guys know, we were cleaning seed at the North Farm. We are not doing that either. We're basically just waiting for it to warm up. In two weeks, not even 10 days, we're supposed to go all the way back to minus two Celsius. So it's just about gonna, like, it could, it could potentially come above freezing. Still working on bushings. Cold, cold, cold job sitting under there working with your bare hands. But anyways, we'll just head down here uh, to Equipment Row. I know you can't see anything out my window and I don't dare try to wash it in this temperature. We have, uh, we're working on this drill. Obviously we got the tractor wired in for the, or the Borgo monitor, I guess I should say wired in. So this is, uh, I was gonna say this is my drill, but I have two drills. So this is the third, this is the drill that was up at the North Farm. It has the 1300 bushel cart back there. And uh, we're gonna run it on the tractor with the LSWs, which is actually Ashton's tractor. And then at some point, we're probably gonna swap those tractors out during mid seat so we can try out the VF tires and see if they pull any different. So that is the dealio, or a little bit of an update, I guess I should say there. All right, but in other news, hold on here, let me roll this window up. Remember when we were going around over there? Sorry, I don't mean to make you guys sick. Sorry, I gotta slow down here. Um, we were picking up a whole pile of uh, seed samples. We stuck them in uh, bags and um, we picked up lentils, chickpeas, and we were gonna send them away for some teat seed seed testing. Sorry. Let me just try to get, get the right angle with the sun here so it can work in the truck. Well, we have those results. And uh, is that sun gonna be a problem to you guys? Maybe. Maybe I should look the other direction. There. I think this is better for everybody involved. So I've got this broke down in between North and South Farms. So these are all North Farm. We'll stick those there. This is South Farm. So um, for every little bag that you send away, whether it be uh, wheat, durum, chickpeas, lentils, you get two pieces of paper. You get this one and you get, if I can, oh my goodness, here we go. You get this one, which, sto sh which shows you the kernel weight and the different pathogens that they found on the seed. Okay, so uh, let's talk about this. First one's up is, let me zoom in a little bit here, is uh, the Durham from the South Farm. So I always do a check. So you got your germination and then you got your vigor. Then you got the germination, which is treated with the seed treat that I always use, and then obviously the vigor when it's treated with the seed treat we always use. So I always start with a check, and then 
again when I treat it. So basically, germination should be fairly self-explanatory to you guys. It's literally just the germination of it. If you uh, if you stuck a hundred seeds in some saran wrap on some uh, say some paper towel and dampen that paper towel, that would tell you how many of, of 100, 95 germinated. But when treated with sea treat, 98 germinated. Now I'm not saying to do this out of 100. I'm just using that as an example, okay? And uh, vigor, the difference between germination and vigor, vi germination is germination. Vigor is basically like the umph. It's like the mm. It's like the vroom. It's like the rah. You know what I mean? I should probably never do that again. But uh, that is basically what it is. It's just a mm, to get it out of the ground. <laughs> oh, man. Sometimes you do things and you're like, ah, I really shouldn't. But anyways, that is what the vigor is, okay? So, now let's compare this derm sample from the South Farm to the North Farm derm, because we grew derm up there. Here it is right here. Oh, no, that's wheat. Always helps you get the right one, that's also wheat. That's lentils. Let's, I like to be very unorganized. Don't want those, don't want those. Don't want that one. Here it is, bottom of the pile, pretty classic, all right. Okay, so our check germination is 95 South Farm, North Farm 94. Still treated with the same treat, 98, 98, the same. Vigor is 85, un uncheck, 86, basically the same. Treated 90 and 91. So this is basically the same, okay? So just because you get a drought and you're working with drought, wheat, durum, lentils, chickpeas, whatever it might be at the South Farm does not mean that it will produce poor quality seed. We had amazing crops up north. I think this durum right ran around, around, I don't know, 60 or 60 or 70. I can't remember what it was anymore. But anyway, it's a really good crop of durum. And this durum was my worst crop of durum. I think it ran around five to seven bushels an acre, all right? And look at the seed. It's the same, basically the same. Now let's flip it over and we'll take a look at the Z's. So this here, uh, this one, I can't even pronounce that for you guys. I'm not even trying it or I will butcher it badly. But this is very normal. It's very normal to see this between 10 to 20. Okay, that's pretty normal. Uh, then you got a little bit of seedling, a uh, little bit of fusarium right here. Seedling, seedling blight root rot That's what I'm trying to say. That's pretty normal to see. Everything else looks really clean. And then obviously this is the check when I treated it, zero. So I really don't care what this looks like unless this here, this fusarium graminearum, if that were to be really high, then that could cause problems. Okay, so that would be one that would be a concern to me as well as that's actually the only one that's concerned to me is this one right here depending on how high that one was but we got zero when we get to lentils and chickpeas we will uh we'll talk about that I just gotta roll my sleeves up here okay and then when we treated it it's all zero so i really like i was saying i really don't care what that is because when i treat it it makes all that go away thousand kernel weight 42. now let's just stick this one over here put that one side Check our derm here. This is North Farm. I should expect to see a little bit more with this. Exactly, okay, we got a little bit of root rot here, half a percent. Here we go, we got 1% uh, Fusarium graminearum. And this stuff was sprayed for Fusarium graminearum, all right? It was sprayed. This was not, obviously, because you're not gonna spray a crop that does not have any disease, because they're not gonna have any disease because there was literally no rain. And then this, pretty normal. This is maybe a little bit high, 31. So, sorry here, get all this coordinate. And then the seedling root rot is 3.5. Again, once I treat it, look, all zeros. And this derm is a little bit heavier, which is to be expected. So that, you guys, is the difference between the North and South Farm derm. That is great, good, number one. Great, good, good and great. It's all good, it's all great. 
<laughs> um, so here's our wheat. Now let's look at our wheat. Actually, screw the wheat. We don't, we're running out of time here. I'm already burning up five minutes. Let's look at some lentils. Okay, do I have two lentils? I do, okay. Hold on, I don't know if I've got two lentils here. I've got chickpea and a chickpea, okay. I guess I only have one lentils. Okay, so again, we have our check. I treat this with Vibrance Max RFC. 93 is check, 96 is treated. 91 is check, 94 is treated. That's just South Farm, FHF. Now up here somewhere I have a lentil. I might even have two lentils. Uh, no. This one. I'll take this one. Okay. I have two tested lentils. We'll look at this one first. This one here is 95, 93. 97 when it's treated, 96. 88, little poor vigor on this one. I don't really like to see go below the 90s a whole lot if I don't have to. I I know that the Durham was, but well, maybe it's not bad. Maybe it's not bad. It's the 70s, you don't want to go into the 70s. Okay, and then uh, 91 when it's been treated. So let's look at our disease package. Shouldn't be very much, if any, if anything, on the South Farm, this is all South Farm. Yeah basically nothing and then obviously nothing when I treat it oh yeah and this is for Clearfield and they'll actually do a Clearfield test basically they just spray it with Clearfield and make sure it doesn't fail or pass because if it failed well then you would have obviously bad seed and that would be catastrophic if you went out and sprayed everything with Clearfield thinking that it was gonna pass because as the seed gets older it does degenerate pass Awesome. All right, let's look at the North Farm. Should be a little more disease on this one. Though I did spray it twice, and I gave it a pile of micros. Actually pretty good. Let's see if we can compare these here. All right. This is pretty good. Obviously, once I treated it, Everything passed, a little heavier seat on this particular sample. This field was, yeah, Louis East. That makes sense. So this stuff was, I sprayed with Roundup. So this stuff should be a little bigger seed because it got to mature a lot more. Now let's check the stuff that I hit with some Reglone early. It was actually too early, that's wheat. Here it is, lentils. 92, 97, 89, 91. Don't even remember where the last one was. Doesn't matter. This is actually a little better for disease. And they're lighter. That's exactly what I thought. They're lighter. They're actually lighter than the South Farm lentils. And that came off the North Farm. And these yielded really good, by the way. This was a really good crop. So let's compare just the north now. Get that out of here. I might have to stop this and, and uh, figure out where they went here. There we go, here's the Louis East. Just gonna do a little comparison again here. 92.95. Yeah, so this one, I got to run to maturity a little bit more, hence probably a little better germ. That's about all. Pull this out. Pull this one out. Try and line this up if I can. So this one actually has a little bit more disease. Actually, it does make sense. It did sit out there in the rain longer. So, otherwise, still really good seed, you guys. Really happy with the seed. I'm getting all this stuff mixed up. Um, let's look at chickpeas. Obviously, I don't have any North Farm chickpeas because you cannot grow chickpeas at North. You can't really grow lentils near my chickpeas. Um, germ isn't as awesome on check. Really good, obviously a different treat yet again. Um, there you go, you basically see. Okay, so I wanted to pull the chickpea one up because Astakaida is one that you want to be worried about. Okay, that's the one. All these other ones, don't give a crap about. It's how high is this Astakaida percentage? And uh, when it's treated, it's obviously zero. So just a little FYI on the chickpea, 
to be able to buy insurance to insure like uh, crop insurance on chickpeas it cannot be above like the check I don't think I, shoot I should look this up before I say there's actually a percentage that it cannot exceed and it's pretty low it's like 5% or something that it can't exceed and then you have to prove you have to have this that it's zero when you seed them treated zero because if this was too high over here even with the seed treat alone it might not get it back down to zero okay and astakaida and chickpeas is like Viserium graminearum in uh, wheat and durum it's actually worse this will take your crop of chickpeas out in a week if left untreated in the right conditions so we have lost whole fields of chickpeas and we have tried our best uh, but when that disease gets going rampant you cannot stop it so anyways this is good this is really good and this is to be expected because it was a drought last year there isn't any okay so that, that's to be expected all right guys uh, what else should we take a peek at some wheat maybe all right so here's our wheat south farm north farm treated check treated check exact same 99 that is impressive zero change for the treat south farm 98 99 this is awesome seed you're in the 90s for the vigor this is basically as good as it gets you guys this is about as good as it can get now let's go and take a peek here at our disease again we expect to see that that's actually pretty low expect to see a little of that that's fine once it's treated it's zero seed weight 33 all right let's pull out the north hey 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 you stay here you stay here buddy challenges with one hand all right let me get these lined up here obviously a little bit higher disease to be expected this is zero that's what I care about this was also sprayed with fungicide and yeah so Mike why would the Durham bin I think the Durham had some right the North Farm Durham had a little bit of serum because you shouldn't be growing Durham up there that's why and I may have gotten away with this year, but I might not get away with it next year. So it's one of those deals where Fusarium is a Durham killer in that area, just kind of like Astakaida is for chickpeas down here, or chickpeas in general, actually. But once it's all been uh, treated, we're good to go. A little bit heavier, also to be expected. So that's pretty much it in a nutshell, you guys. So it's for us, it's super important to know exactly what we're putting in the ground. Like what happens if that came back and you think it's, you know, maybe, maybe you're used to seeing mid nineties, right? But maybe it come back for some reason and the clear field test failed and you spray your lentils with clear field and you kill them all. Or it comes back at 70 or 80% or maybe have decent germination, but really, really poor vigor. Typically, that's not the case. Typically, the vigor always follows the germ to a certain percentage, but... So when do you get bad seed? That's a really good question. Thanks for asking that, by the way. Typically, wet wet falls. Wet falls, which we haven't had down the South Farm in since 2019, actually. 2020, 2019, I think it was. And 2016. 2016 might have been the worst. 2019 was snow. Um... Seems to me in 2016, there wasn't any good seed anywhere. Not even the seed growers had good seed. Like we're talking some of the worst crap that you stuck it back in the ground in 2017 because you had literally no choice. You were There was no good seed anywhere. Like 70, 80% germ, you know, you're seeding 30% heavier. You're, you're treating the heck out of it. You're just trying to make something of it, all right? So really wet falls or a frost during the fall when it's half green you know stuff like that that will really affect your seed quality in my experience um if you would like to see how these guys actually test everything 
I'll throw the video. We actually did a video with them. Um, I think it was a couple years ago now. We toured their their uh, their lab, and uh, they kind of showed us how we how they did it and the procedures of everything that they do. And I thought they did a really awesome job. So I will stick that video. It's a couple years old, but I'll stick that video in the description of this one. So go check it out if you'd like to see, you know, how they test for vigor and how they test for uh, germination. Okay, now let's quickly rush. I know I'm running out of time. I'm not trying to hold you guys up. These are just things that, this is a little piece of the pie that us farmers and producers are literally chewing on all the time. It's seed, you're trying to figure out seeding plans, crop rotations, soil sampling, you know, what do you have in there? You know, maybe you want to put chickpeas or lentils on your cereal stubble, which would make sense for a good rotation. But it's been so dry down here. What happens if, well, this is a this is a scenario actually where, you know, maybe you put too much fertilizer on these last couple of years. Maybe not too much, but you're fertilizing for say a, an average crop, which would be 35, 40 bushel down here for sure. And it just hasn't been raining and your uh, fertilizer level has been building, which is good because they're not going anywhere. That's good news. It's your bank and money. That's awesome. So that way you could literally put another wheat crop on it if you wanted to and not have to fertilize any of it right because you have probably like a 60 bushel crop before the fertilizer is still in the ground the downside is is when it starts screwing up your crop rotations like oh i would like to put chickpeas or lentils there and you have a whack of fertilizer in the ground how does that affect your chickpeas and lentils so these are well i can tell you how it's going to affect your chickpeas or lentils it's going to really grow a lot of lentils it's going to grow a lot of foil it's going to be a lot of green lush which is not normally good for disease. It's not really normally awesome in general because it's drawn extra moisture and down here moisture is, a, is like, it's like a, well, we don't have any of it. So you don't want the crop to be drawn anymore just to produce extra plant growth, which will actually cause extra disease issues when you need it to put that moisture and nutrients into producing seed. So there's lots of stuff like that that we're chewing over. But anyways, going back to seed, Up here, for the most part, we can reseed our crop after we grew it. Not everybody can do that. Um, I know I, I don't even dare start saying what our American friends, the South, can do and people over in Europe. But here where we are, we can harvest it for the most part, clean it, seed test it. If we like it, we stick it in the ground. If we don't like the results or if we want to try something different, we can buy new seed. The, but what you cannot do is reseed your canola. All right, you, we sign contracts agreeing that we'll grow this and we sell them all the seed back. And if we want to grow it again next year, we have to buy new seed, all right? We enter into contracts knowing that, so it just is what it is. Now, your wheat, your durum, your, your lentils, your chickpeas, for the most part, you buy it once and you're good. Now, in saying that, there is different wheats out like this, particular wheat that we're growing you can really only grow it I think it's shoot I can't remember I think it's three three times and because this wheat is bred uh, to fight off certain things like I think it's midge, wheat midge anyways I can't remember I should probably do more research before I do videos but anyways it actually will start degenerating it actually starts going backwards because it's bred right it starts going backwards as the more it multiplies it actually starts to revert back, which isn't good because it could start affecting your yield, could start affecting your protein, it could start affecting the tolerance of the wheat midge, if that be the thing, or whatever it might be, right? Disease package, for maybe even for example. So it's important to keep your seed current. You don't want to be running 15 year old seed. Um, it's okay to run a, a couple year old seed, that's fine, but you want to keep your seed current. So, you know, for myself, what I like to do is I like to buy new seed every couple years. And maybe I, I'm not buying all brand new chickpea seed, all brand new lentil seed, all brand new wheat durum seed all in the same year because the cost of that is astronomical. Like, for example, if you could sell your wheat right now out of your bin for 10 bucks to go buy new wheat seed, certified wheat seed, you might spend 18 to 20 bucks. It's for sure 18 bucks, well, maybe not 20, prices are coming down, but it's it's a lot more money to go buy new seed. 
And if you're seeding at two bushel, well then you do the math on however many acres. Uh, and then there's other things like other factors when buying seed. You typically want like to buy seed, my arm's getting sore here. You typically want to buy seed when that commodity price is in the tank because it's cheaper, makes sense. For example, green lentil seed, I'm gonna get some green lentil seed, I'm spending a buck a pound. If I had green lentil seed to sell, which I do not, but if I did, I could only sell it for probably 60 cents right now. But I'm spending a buck to buy it. I'm spending a buck to buy it, and if we get a good crop of green lentils, it's like a niche market, I'm gonna, I'm gonna sell those green lentils for probably 35, 40 cents hopefully 40, right? See, see, you understand what you don't wanna do? You never have to wanna to have to buy seed at the peak of the market. So for example, I can't remember what the price of flax seed is right now, but I don't think it's too good. I think it's right in the tank. And I have no interest, and nobody else does, of growing flax. So, but it would be smart to go buy some flax seed for when, if you ever think that flax is gonna be the dark horse and you know, come, come become the shining star one of these times. You, know, you, you get what I'm trying to say. You get what I'm trying to say. And you definitely don't want to go buy all your seed all the first year. So I, every year I'm always buying some new seed, whether it be some lentil seed in one year and then wheat the next year, derm the next year, and then I just have a rotation going. So that's how I do it. Every farmer is different and that's perfectly fine. That's okay. And uh, I am very hoarse from talking. I know, right? You didn't think that could happen to me. That's the update. So I think I answered most of your guys' questions. I hope that I did. If not, well, we'll do another video another time. If you don't hear from me ever again, well, then things went south. <laughs> uh, Ash and I were actually heading to Maui here on Monday. Today is Saturday, so we're flying out. Maui is kind of always our go-to place if we can go. We haven't been there in a little while. We haven't been there since we got engaged, actually. So we're gonna pack up the little man and we are going to hit a jet plane and we're gonna head out to Maui for a couple weeks. So I don't know how much YouTube and I'm gonna do out there. So if you do see a gap and there's nothing, it's because I'm in Maui. And uh, if you never hear from me again, well then one of those Max 9 door plugs things flew off and I was probably right beside the door. So. <laughs> oh man. Anyways, you guys have yourself a good one. I uh, will catch you on the flip side. Um, I look forward to at least doing at least one Maui video with you guys. So stay tuned. Talk to you later. Adios.